So, good evening everyone. So, myself, uh, Dr. Madhu MP. I am a consultant gastroenterologist at uh, Astra Harvey Hospital, JP Nagar, Bangalore. So, today I am here to talk about uh, cholera disease. So, there are a few sporadic cases of uh, cholera reported across the city. So, we also had about uh, 5 patients admitted in our ward last week. So, it's not a new disease, it's an ancient disease which has caused a lot of outbreaks, especially whenever the sanitation is a problem. So, it has caused outbreaks usually when there is a mass gathering or usually after an earthquake where there is a problem of shelter and sanitation. So, what is this cholera? How does it happen? How does it spread? And how do we manage this patient? That's what I want to give you an information about. So, cholera is basically a bacterial disease. It is called Vibrio cholerae and then bacteria which usually spreads through contaminated water, contaminated food. So, it's a basically a bacterial infection. So, how does somebody acquire this infection? This bacterial infection is acquired once you have taken a contaminated food or water. Once it enters the body, after how many hours the patient will develop symptoms. So, it can ranges vary from 5 hours to 5 days. So, patients can develop usually symptoms on uh, second day or the day 3 where patients will present with various forms of uh, symptoms. So, commonest symptoms are like vomiting, they will have abdominal distension and they can develop loose motions. So, this loose tools or the loose motions can be mild. So, in such cases it can be managed at home. Sometimes it can be very severe where the patient will have an explosive diarrhea where patients can have 20 to 30 times loose tools in a day. So you can imagine, so with so much of loose tools, what can happen to the body? So some people can lose even up to 20 liters per day in stools. So basically, so because of there is so much of loss of fluid, patients will develop signs of dehydration. So they can develop sunken eyes, they can lose their skin turgor, there will be extreme uh, thirst to the patients. So because there is so much of fluid loss, they can develop low BP and can lead even into shock. So, with so much of fluid loss, some of these patients can land up in kidney injury also. We call it as acute kidney injury. In very severe cases, sometimes they may require even hemodialysis also. And with the loss of fluid, patients also lose uh, various electrolytes. The common ones is a potassium, which can lead to hypokalemia and the muscle patients can present with various muscle cramps. So, since there is a diarrhea thing, so how do we diagnose them? So, diagnosis usually we take a good history, there is an explosive diarrhea. We classically call this at rice water diarrhea, where the stools will not have any pigments. So, that is a classical, and you may have a contact with the patients of diarrhea, or there can be an outbreak in that city. All this will be taken into consideration. And finally, we do a stool examination. The stool will be tested under the microscopy. So, where you can see a motile bacteria in the microscope, it is called hanging drop preparation. So, once we have diagnosed the disease, how do we manage them? As I already told you, the cholera can be mild. In such cases, it can be managed at home. So, the most important thing is rehydration. So, adequately, you will have to give them fluids. The most commonly used is oral rehydration solution, that is ORS powders. So, which is very much available everywhere. So, please mix that sachet in a liter of water. So, every time you pass tools, you take about 200 to 300 ml of this solution so that you get well hydrated. So, other things, there are certain foods you need to take, like you can take uh, buttermilk, you can take uh, tender coconut, you can take soups and you can take rice based items. Rice based items are excellent because they increase the absorption of sugar as well as your electrolytes. So, please, you can take rice based items. So, there are a few things we need to avoid them because they can further worsen your diarrhea or loose motions. Especially, you need to cut down on fruits and fruit juices because fruits have a lot of fructose. We don't digest them during these episodes of diarrhea, may increase your loose motions. Please avoid milk products. Out of milk products, you can take only is the buttermilk. You need to avoid milk, you need to avoid uh, paneer, lassi, coffee, tea. These things should be avoided. Please avoid sweets. And you can also avoid this carbonated water like colas. These are the things should be avoided. So if symptoms are severe, if there is frequent episodes of vomiting, not able to tolerate orally, please visit a nearby hospital. Because if you leave them, uh, severe cholera can even lead to fatality or the death in about 40% of the patients. So please go to a hospital. Once you reach an hospital, most important thing is giving a fluid. So usually give an IV fluids and adequate rehydration will be done. So patient may be given potassium supplements to correct the electrolyte imbalance and uh, you need to give an antibiotics, usually a single dose of doxycycline what we use as an antibiotic. So if you treat properly the patients, 
so the death rate should be less than one percent if you don't take adequate treatment it can lead to a fatality so make sure that you visit a hospital as early as possible so finally so how do we prevent it because so it can lead to a major outbreak in a city like bangalore so the most important thing is sanitization and as well as hand hygiene which is very important and other thing you need to take care is what you drink and what you eat so as i told you it spread through the contaminated water so make sure that you drink only bottled water or a boiled water or one which is treated that is chlorinated water second thing with respect to food please avoid eating road sites you may catch an infection make sure that what you eat is hygienic anything which is served hot is still okay because it will be boiled and cooked if it is something cold especially like fruit juices those things should be avoided because you may catch an infection other thing you need to take care is hand hygiene because hand hygiene is very important please uh, wash your hands properly after you use your restrooms please wash your hands properly before eating and if you are an adult treating a kid or feeding a kid make sure that you wash your hands properly before feeding the child so even in children also cholera can affect if your uh, baby is very small and has a breastfeed child you can continue with the breastfeeding and if somebody is an older kid you can continue with this oral sol ORS solution and zinc which is a multivitamin has shown very beneficial in children which can also be used to prevent so to conclude it is basically a uh, notifiable disease which can cause a major outbreak so you should be aware of the disease there is a new cases across the city so please maintain your hand hygiene make sure that uh, what you eat and what you drink should be you should be very careful and thirdly whenever you have a severe diarrhea please go to a nearby hospital so that adequate hydration and further complications can be prevented